Serious, what has been your scariest encounter with another human being? I was sitting at a coffee shop one afternoon minding my own business when a stranger came in the door. Awkwardly glanced in my direction then looked me dead in the eye and said you're being watched. My heart jumped and I just kind of responded in fear. Excuse me? You're being watched. He proclaimed once more. But this time a little more sternly. I must have had this look of terror on my face because he quickly chuckles and tells me someone is standing outside the window behind me staring at me. I look behind me and it's my brother. Mentally disturbed abusive older brother beat me regularly as a kid but one time it got so bad I actually fought back and he pinned me down and tried to cut my throat but our older sister walked in at the exact moment it counted and stopped him. He had just barely started the cut. The part that f kept me up the most though was my mom let him back in the house two weeks later after receiving no psychological treatment at all. I was 7. I developed pretty abnormal behaviors in the attempt to feel more secure and now even as an adult I cannot sleep in an unlocked room. There's an abandoned hotel near where I live. It closed about 10 years ago and it's been knocked down now sadly. I went in with my friends when it was still up, we were about 12, and we snuck in for like the 1000th time. We went into the old kitchen and there was this guy just there with his back turned in a parka. He looked about 20. And he just slowly started turning around. One foot at a time. When he turned around fully. He was wearing one of those cheap theater masks. We f king booked it and I cut my leg off the fence we climbed through. When we got about half a kilometer away my friend just started crying because he was so shocked. TBH. I think that guy was just exploring and heard us and decided to scare us. My ex got a gun pulled on him while at a house party. I was sitting next to him. And couldn't move for like 15 or so minutes while things were figured out. He thought my ex had stolen his coke and was a little angry. That time I got mistaken for a gang member by a rival gang and got surrounded by 15-20 guys with weapons. Thought my life was gonna end then and there but somehow managed to talk some sense into them and convince them I wasn't who they were looking for. They ended telling me I was real. All gave me pounds. Man. While back on the news. I saw basically this scenario happen. Where this one gang chased down a young kid who they thought was a member of a rival gang. And the kid noticed them coming after him. So he ran. They literally slit his throat in the middle of the street. Cameras saw it and everything. The kid wobbled down the street and sat on the side wall bleeding out calling 911. He died not too long afterwards. And what's crazy is once the gang who did it found out they got an innocent kid. They messaged the parents on Facebook apologizing to them for it. So. You got lucky friend. My dad threatened to kill me with a tire iron once. He had me backed into a corner and the tire iron in his hand. I knew the son of a bitch was crazy enough to do it but I didn't care. I told him to do it. Kill me then asshole he pussied out and I walked away. Wasn't till about 10 minutes later when I was driving away I broke down shaking and crying. Why it happened when I was about 22 I told him I was leaving moving out. I had legal guardianship of me because I'm disabled. He didn't want me to leave because they got government assistance and tax breaks for taking care of me I spent a few months in the hospital but was moved to a group home after a while and am more high functioning now than I have ever been so I do not regret it. I was home alone at my college house. My roommates were all gone for the night for whatever reason. I had a girl over and we got drunk. She ubered home and I passed out on the couch in the living room. When I woke up the TV and my backpack that my laptop was in were gone. Both were in the room I passed out in. Some dude literally robbed my house right in front of me passed out on the couch. Felt pretty scared when I woke up and realized what had happened. The girl took it. I was up head when I was 8. The guy just. Smiled. The entire time. Said nothing. Just grinned at me in the most twisted way imaginable. I'm never forgetting that smile. The first time I tried to leave my ex. He was dead in the face and eyes and calmly told me I wasn't leaving before beating the ever living shti out of me. 
attempting to stab me a few times before losing his nerve for it. Then plop me in I'm guessing a closet and lock the door. Still don't remember how long I was in there and don't remember being let out. Just ending up waking in bed. Finally got away from him for good a few weeks later. Dude tried to rob me with a gun under his shirt. Might have been a finger IDK but I was way too drunk to let that shit happen. Pulled the crazy card and started screaming at him at max volume at about 3am he backed down a little. Then we were sitting there and he kept telling me man you're not leaving and I kept telling him well you're not getting my money and it must have been 30 minutes. Then a taxi drove by and I hailed it and got in despite him saying he'd kill me if I got in. Dude poked me with whatever was under his shirt but I was pretty certain it was his hand. It probably was cause I kept telling him to show me the gun and he wouldn't. Probably was a bad idea but I was a like 14-15 shots deep. This happened when I was visiting Seattle for the Microsoft Blue Hut conference. There's a little more to it before that I probably shouldn't share publicly. I went from a small town of a couple thousand. To a college city over a million. When I started to look for jobs. I missed my stop and ended up having to walk through the city in the middle of the night. I waited near a bus stop by a strip club. Walk near a crime scene. Under highways. Just trying to get back to the dorms. I walked by some rundown motel and made eye contact with two guys and I knew my luck was over. They caught up with me and pinned me down. They said they wouldn't hurt me. But searched me everywhere. Threw everything from my backpack. Kept saying I was worthless. A cop car drove by. Did nothing. I'm a small man. And I was dealing with anorexia. They made me feel like nothing. And followed me to the dorm laughing. Dude chasing me with a knife or an escape and evasion exercise where we weren't told it was happening and got kidnapped by dudes with guns in ballot lovers. The second probably shti me up more at the time but once you knew it was staged it wasn't so bad on reflection. In the wee hours one morning I was sitting and reading in my front room with just the storm door closed. This guy came up and just started to try his hardest to open the door saying I need to talk to you now. I gotta talk to you. He was rattling the door furiously with both hands on the latch. It was straight out of a Stephen King novel. I freaked out and just froze. Couldn't move. Speak. Scream. Cry. Just stared wide eyed at this crazed Efka trying to get into my house, to get me and do god knows what. My husband exploded out of nowhere looking about a foot taller than his 6 feet 1 frame. With his voice booming and feet stomping. He met the maniac at the door. I'll tear off your head and shti down your neck. Dot. MR would be murder a rapist took off into the darkness. I was still sitting there, frozen with fear and dread. I'm absolutely certain that my jarhead husband saved my life in those few seconds. I lived in an apartment by a gas station for a few years. My older sister, 15, and I, 12, were home alone in the living room and this late 40s white man. Over 6 feet just walks into the apartment. We were so shocked and after a few seconds he realized wrong apartment stammered a bit. And walked out. We weren't sure what to do but she quickly locked and bolted the door. Few minutes it went by and the door started to jiggle. He got past the screen door. And was trying to open the last one he banged on the door said let me in. We ran into her room closet. She kept shouting stop IT as she held me. I don't remember much after that. But I love her for doing her best. When I moved into an apartment and the old tenant's drug dealer showed up. Big black guy that had just gotten out of prison and needed his $200 back. I talked him down by asking him if $200 was worth more time. After what felt like an eternity he left and thanked me for talking him down. I then went inside and almost blacked out. I was going for a walk one day via my usual route when I saw a naked. Drunk man jacking off in the bushes next to the sidewalk. I tried to quickly walk away. But he started approaching me. So I crossed the street onto a median. There were cars coming and I was almost hit. After the cars passed. I crossed back to the sidewalk and bolted the whole way home. My scariest encounter with someone I know was when one of my classmates tried to strangle me. 
to this day. I don't know what the motivation was. There were people in the next room. But every time I tried to scream. He pushed down on my neck harder until I almost passed out. I'm female in my early 20s. I walk into work at 5. 45 am and park two blocks from work on a neighborhood street. I'm always on alert. Keeping a close eye on my surroundings. One morning a few months ago. I heard an engine approaching rapidly from behind me. Then a creepy. White van loudly screeched to a halt right next to me. The driver had his passenger window down and leaned forward. In my terror. I didn't think about the fact that a kidnapper would be getting out of the car. Not rolling down their window. I immediately stopped breathing and ran for my life. My life flashed before my eyes. I looked back to see a newspaper fly out the window and the guy sped off. It took me an hour to calm down. My heart still stops every time I see a van or hear tires screech. I have been abused by an ex-boyfriend but that's definitely not the scariest that's reserved for the child molester babysitter that touched me inappropriately more than once. My parents god love them were so freaking naive they were overstressed and overworked. He was a 60 something year old man that went to our church. We called him candy man because he always had candy for us kids. He babysat me and my brother more than once. I will never ever forget that evil smile and that this won't hurt. They still have no idea it's been over 20 years but it messed me up bad. I have CPTSD from both my ex and him. That was the scariest thing ever and even now in my sleep sometimes I'll see him. That's what's scary. I got robbed at gunpoint once. I saved a man from drowning one time. He told me a lie about his backstory that his mother was dying from cancer in the hospital about 400 miles away. I took him and dropped him off at the hospital because I had nothing else going on in my life. This was on a Saturday. Sunday passed and then Monday came and on the news they were looking for him for murder. He had shot his sister's boyfriend to death. I saved the life of the murderer then facilitated his escape then turned him in. Probably the time I was in university and finishing an essay at around 1am. I heard a knock at my window and saw the face of an unfamiliar young man staring right at me. He had to flip and step up onto a trash can in order to look into my bedroom. I screamed and launched a slipper at him, was the first thing in reach, and he bolted. I cried and cried thinking of what might have happened if I weren't already awake. A close second is when an older man sat beside me on the city bus. Leaned over to look at my phone and asked me what time it was. I told him. And he stuck his hand down his pants and grunted. Staring at my face and then at my breasts. I was like 18 at the time. I got off at the next stop and ran. Anybody who witnessed it didn't give a damn. I met this guy on a video game online. We talked daily and I started having real feelings for him. We skyped and chatted on the phone and I felt like I knew him and was so comfortable. He convinced me to meet him and I agreed. I was snatched up by him and his dad and they took me away. Where I was held in isolation for well over a year. Until I was about to get a hold of my mom and I finally got to come home. Scariest time of my life. And he is the scariest person I've met to date. I confronted the leader of a cult I was a part of while we were in closed room. Alone. In retrospect that wasn't a good idea at all. His eyes got very cold and he became incredibly silent. This guy had threatened to kill ex-cult members before. The moment after I called him out on his bullshit I had this realization that oh t He could actually. Legitimately kill me right now if he wanted to. I honestly don't know what I was thinking. It was pretty stupid of me to do that alone. But nothing happened. And that was the last time I ever talked to him. For months I was terrified he'd find me and take me out. I'm just glad he's not in the area anymore. A police officer threatened to arrest me for asking questions while I was holding my 3 month old daughter after his co-workers had just tackled my fiance for taking one step backward while talking to them. Needless to say. I stopped asking questions right then. I've never felt so powerless in my life. Mostly just men following me. I have to lose them in stores. Hasn't happened in a while. 
and once when I was 15 stroke 16 I was groped at a friend's party by a 25 year neighbor that came over for IDK. That was T. When I was 11 a man showed me his dick in a public shower. I went back to my friends and we stayed together. But the man started following us. We ended up hiding in a playground until someone noticed and came to our rescue. After our parents picked us up the police were called and I still have the victim report I wrote when I was 11 saved on my laptop. I was in Paris and some Arab dude comes up to me and asks me where I'm from. Now. I'm not that stupid. So I obviously wasn't going to say America. So I tell him I'm from Russia. In Russian. He starts walking away when he suddenly snaps back around and runs up to me and starts kicking my legs trying to deadleg me. I wrestled for a couple years in high school so I wasn't about to let this shti go down. I noticed his hand in my pocket so I pushed him down and he came back up and swung. But missed. So I stopped yelling random shti in Russian and charge him. Managing to land the biggest haymaker of my life. Stiff as a board he dropped and I grabbed my wallet talked some shti and he ran off. What's scary is that I was so engulfed in rage that I didn't stop for a second to think if he had a weapon and would have killed me. He might have. But if he did I was really lucky. You're lucky there was only one. Usually. They do that shti in packs. I was accused of our pay and all because I was mean to a girl. She admitted she made it up but still cost me $30,000 in time. Nothing happened to her. Didn't even have to come to court. I'm now mortally terrified of an angry woman. About a decade ago I was dating a girl and we got back to her place from a bar pretty late. She went to the bathroom, straight ahead from the front door and to the right, and I went to the kitchen to get a beer, to the left from the front door. I open the beer and see someone walk past the kitchen and into the girl's bedroom. Then I hear a flush and the girl comes out of the bathroom and finds me staring at her. Shocked. There's someone in your room. I tell her. Confused. She looks in the room. And yeah. There's a drugged out girl in the bedroom. She thinks she's at a party. Apparently she'd been at a party earlier in the night. Got f ked up. And decided to go to the apartment of some guy she used to date. She knew how to get in the back stairwell. But went to the wrong apartment, and I must have left the back door unlocked. 10 a.m. on the footpath of a major road in Madrid. Just down from Puerta del Sol. Scottish junkie in leather duster steps in front of me. Slides hand out of duster sleeve to reveal syringe. Says. I have AIDS and I've used the syringe. Give me your money or I stick you with it. So much more frightening than the time I had a knife pulled on me or the time four enormous Croatian. Shaven gorillas chased me out of a bar and down a number of streets in Dubrovnik after Australia beat Croatia in the 2006 World Cup. I've had a few. But this is what stuck the most. I was peeing at a urinal, male, in our office. While I was peeing. Like while the urine was flowing into the urinal. Our homozool office mate suddenly puts his hands on my stomach. Asterisk. I swear I have felt true fear at that very moment. Five seconds felt like five years. I could not move because urine was still flowing out. My dongle was out. And he was breathing right behind me. Hands on my stomach. Semicolon. My initial thought of self defense action was to aim and pee at him. But he's homo IDK maybe he's kinky so I just didn't move and I was already of thinking of screaming louder than Tarzan because he might put a sock in my mouth or something. I was so scared I swear. Semicolon. I have nothing against what he defines himself. What I dislike are inappropriate actions. Imagine you're a woman taking a piss and this humongous muscular guy puts his hands on you while your genital is exposed. Because that was the threat I felt. Semicolon. He was just touching my dad bod because I've gotten fat. <laughs>